Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Day number 17. Can you believe it? <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you ready for uh, John chapter 17? 17 days also into the new year, if you're following this exactly um, in January. And uh, how is January going for you guys? We keep hitting hurdle after hurdle. You know, our dryer broke. My son's car broke. Uh, Jay's been driving him back and forth to work. We had more snow than in a long time. We did have snowmageddon in 2017, so it still wasn't as much as that, but it's pretty close. And uh, we shoveled for two days straight, and uh, the roads are still solid ice. It's negative three right now. It's okay. <laughs> have you ever wondered what to pray for because there's too much or have you ever wondered um, or just wish somebody else would pray for you <laughs> well did you know Jesus prayed for you we're gonna see that I took a peek uh, so let's get into John chapter 17 because I'm kind of excited to see what Jesus prayed uh, for us uh, and for you and uh, and uh, I'm hoping it's good I hope he prayed for a new dryer. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's get to uh, studying. Did I also tell you that uh, on the way to work today, uh, my husband was in a car accident? <laughs> yeah, in the crazy icy roads and bumpy a lady decided to uh, shoot across an intersection while he was just sitting there parked and uh, she didn't make it and she hit a vehicle and actually the other vehicle hit her because she tried to cross and then it uh, shot the accident right to my husband so but thank God um, uh, we have insurance they had insurance and he got the car to limp along to get it to work. So anyway, just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> if you're having a bad January, it's nothing. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Let's see what Jesus has to pray for us. <laughs> good. Let me see. Come on over here just a little bit. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so good, so good, so good. Okay, so uh, John chapter 17. What did you guys think? <laughs> Tell me in the comments. Um, wow. Jesus prayed for us like 2,000 years ago. And here we are. You can just jump ahead right away to verse 20 and it says my prayer is not for them alone I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message and that means the message that the 
the disciples jumped out into the world and spread. They spread it by foot. Uh, they spread it uh, through the Bible. We still have these words that they wrote. And we believe because of their testimony. And so this is all about us. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of times in the Bible when we're reading and we're learning and we're um, things are written uh, to them in that time period. And, you know, we get to just kind of listen in like a fly on the wall. But this is a part of the Bible <laughs> that we are written into. Exactly. Like, I mean, this is all for us, but it was not written to us, if you know what I mean by that. Um, you know, but this right here, Jesus already, as he's praying this, could see you, could see me 2,000 years later. <laughs> That's pretty incredible that he already knew that they would spread their message, their gosp the gospel message, um, to just all over the world. I mean, think about all the things that have been affected just because of Jesus. Um, how much music has been written because of Jesus. Many even regular like pop artists and stuff started out in their local church singing about Jesus. So a lot of music even in the beginning stages you know started out as Christian music. Um, how many people have been affected by all of the songs? How many um, even regular songs have been affected because of this? Um, think about movies, uh, even Star Wars, believe it or not, because if you follow Star Wars, and I do love the old Star Wars shows, you could tell um, that he knew um, something about the Bible <laughs> because he used its stories and he kind of changed them for his own thing, but there's themes in there and little stories that you're like, hey... <laughs> That's where he got, uh, is it George Lucas? Yeah. That's where he got um, that piece of information or that idea for a story. I mean, so much of it, <laughs> he was reading this. So think about all the things that the Bible and Jesus and his disciples have touched. Um, art. Um, many, many years ago, most artists did it. Uh, they were hired by the churches uh, to do um you know, the all the different pictures of Jesus and the disciples and, you know, Mary, um, like everything. Like whether or not modern day people want to realize this, <laughs> Jesus has touched every aspect of our lives. Nothing would be here without him. Literally, because John 1.1 1, 1 says he, he created everything in the beginning. So... That's like huge that he's sitting there 2,000 years ago and thinking about you and thinking about me. Um, so we can take all of these little components of the prayers. You know, what was your favorite part? Um, I kind of want to, you know, later today read this in the Living Translation to see um, sometimes uh, the King James, the New King James, the NIV is what I have, and uh, ESV. I love them because they are... Uh, really good and they're more um, King James I think it's supposed to be word for word I may be wrong about that NIV isn't officially word for word I think ESV in other words they try to translate it exact um, but the living translation although they're really close to the original they put it in a layman's terms um, so that you can really understand in our time period um, so I'd love to actually read this in the living today. Um, but let me show you some points that I actually uh, was just kind of like, okay, what kind of things did Jesus pray for us? What did he pray for his disciples and what did he pray for us? So I just made a list. I, um, I put that he, like in verse 11, uh, he prayed uh, for God to protect them and us, protect us. Jesus prays for our protection and then also in that same verse, he prays for unity. He prays that the disciples would have unity with each other and also with the Father and with him. 
and that just like Jesus and God uh, are so u united and so one, that we would also be that. Um, in, in verse 13, he prayed that we may have a full, full measure of joy within us. <laughs> Um, and that's the Holy Spirit, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what he's referring to. Because it says, verse 13, I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of joy within them. I have given them your word, which it might be Holy Spirit, or it might be his word. Because that could give you the full measure of joy. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, um, for they are not of the world anymore. So do you think full measure of joy is the Holy Spirit? Or do you think full measure of joy is, you know, his word? Right here. I'm not sure. That's an interesting question. I feel like it's the Holy Spirit. And then in verse 15, I noted um, that Jesus prayed for us to be protected from the evil one. This is so important, um, especially if you are doing God's work. And if you are, um, this one stands out to me today um, because of my hubby uh, getting into a car accident. And um, at first I was just flustered because it's just down the street from us. And it's just because a lady made a really bad decision and tried to cross an intersection that she shouldn't have in the really bad icy roads. Um, and three, you know, three different vehicles are now trashed because of it. But, you know, God promised to protect us. And uh, right before she was about to hit, he saw the whole thing happening. And he's like watching. And he said out loud, no, 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 no. And he threw it in reverse. Um, of course, his wheels were spinning, so he didn't get back as fast as he could but he backed up and she hit the front end of him where if he wouldn't have backed up, she would have hit not only, you know, the whole side. So, you know, there was less damage. It's still drivable right now. He had to take part of the fender apart and tie it up <laughs> to make it work. But until they can get us the, you know, fixed with the insurance, it's still workable, which it's our only four wheel drive right now. So I would say that that is God protecting us from the evil one. We're trying to do his work. Um, we're doing our best. You know, we spent the whole weekend <laughs> clearing um, snow for our parents and uh, even from his work, um, uh, just trying to do good. And sometimes when you're out there trying to do good and you're trying to do what God wants you to do, you're trying to get into the word, you're trying to open the word. And the evil one, Satan and his minions, they just try to stir everything up. Um, they try to just hit you with everything they've got. Just to make you uh, distracted, just to make you discouraged. And I'm telling you, when he first um, texts that um, he was just down the street and he had to wait for the police and all that, I was super discouraged because I was just about to shoot the video and I was like, God, why is it that I'm trying, I'm, I'm giving you my all. I'm trying to do what you want me to do. I'm trying to dig into your word. I'm trying to share with others um, about you. And why are we keep getting, you know, one hit after another? But really, when I look in the perspective of the fact that he backed up and the, the damage um, was much less than it could have been. The fact that he's okay, the fact that we can still use the four-wheel drive, at least for right now, uh, which is much needed. Um, the fact that our when our dryer broke, um, we thought we're going to have to get a new dryer. It's been, it's an old little machine, but um, my hubby, um, I said, well, at work you work on all kinds of machines, <laughs> you know, can't you fix it? And he bought like a $50 part and bought a new he heating element and fixed it. Yes, it's exhausting him. He's tired, he's he, he's getting worn down, um, you know, no sleep, just so much to do. But God's protecting us from it being bigger, you know. Um, the wash machine started acting up yesterday and um, 
started throwing codes and it was a heating element and it's not but I was able to limp it along and do all the laundry and you know what I think if I put it on cold I think oh, I might make it through you know and we can limp it along um, so even though it feels sometimes like you're just getting hit 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 look at what it could have been and there's some things that you can't even see that you're being protected from um, you know you just turn down, you accidentally go the wrong way home. Could it have been a really bad accident? Um, we don't know all the things that um, Jesus is protecting us from. So um, he, he prayed for them to be protected. God, please protect them. Because he knew what they were going to have to come up against. And he knew what we're going to have to come up against in this world. Yes, we don't have to worry about getting stoned or beheaded or executed or put into prison for our beliefs um, but our world is getting hard to um, live in it's getting more and more evil around us and so Jesus says he's already prayed 2,000 years ago he prayed for you to be protected so um, so that's really good just lean in on that and say and remind him of that say Lord you promised or you that is kind of a promise because that's a prayer from Jesus to God for your protection from the evil one. And then, um, let's see, in verse 17, he prayed that God would sanctify us by the truth. Um, his word is truth. So sanctify us, that's a really big word. Um, I think it's like purify. I want to look that up really quick. Let me grab my phone sanctify. Let me give you a definition. Biblical definition of definition of sanctify. I don't even know how to spell sanctify. It's such a big word. Where did it go? Okay, to make holy to oh See, this is why I look things up, because I'm thinking, okay, it purifies, it kind of makes you makes you holy, I that I was thinking of. But this other one says, to set apart for God's special use and purpose. That I like, too. Um, it uh, sets you apart. So he says, sanctify them uh, with by the truth, and then he says, his word is is truth so um sanctify him with your word if you are bathing yourself <laughs> in the word every day you're being sanctified and renewed and set apart for his good work that was a really good definition okay and then in 20 uh, verse 20 it says he uh, praise these things not just for the disciples okay I already went through that um, that he prays this isn't just for the disciples that he were right in front of him but it's for us for the future believers the people who would um, believe because of his message um, and their message about him and then I just kind of had there were some repeats like verse 21 it also talks about unity about um, us being united as Christians and to each other because we're all on the same vine we better <laughs> might as well get along um, and also united to Jesus the Holy Spirit um, and uh, to God as as they are united we will be united that's what he was praying for in verse 23 he prays for love let me look at 23 and see um, 23 I in them and you in me okay that's the unity part so that they may be brought to complete unity then the world will know that you sent me is that verse about um, the unity and the love is how uh, the world is gonna know that we are his and that um, we belong to him and that God sent Jesus I felt like I just talked in a circle, but sometimes these talk in circles too. <laughs> um, and have loved them, even as you have loved me. 
So um, he's praying that God loves them, or he's at least not even praying that, he's saying that God loves us as much as God loves Jesus. Is that what that's saying? Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Sometimes, like I said, my dyslexia starts getting all wound up and I'm like, okay, somebody's getting loved and somebody's getting loved like Jesus is loved by God. So I think that's us. <laughs> oh, and then um, 24, Father, I want those who uh, you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Um, he wants us to be with him in eternity. He wants us, us to be with him in heaven. Um, and then I do know I have on there 22 also. Oh, Jesus gave us uh, the glory that he got from the Father. Let me see if I read that right. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as you are one. So God gave Jesus glory, and he handed it to us. Huh, that's really cool. So what else is in there? Oh, back at the top. we got to finish with this. It's the key to eternal life again. Verse 3. Um, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Uh, so basically, that they know you, the only true God, so we know he is the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So eternal life is that we know them, so we need to start to get to know them. <laughs> um, I mean, it's that we believe. You, you can't fully believe until you know who you're believing in. And so that's why we've been going through John and getting to know all of who he is in each chapter, who he says he is, who John says he is, um, who God says he is. And um, yeah, that was a really good verse. Um, that was a really good chapter. <laughs> so anyways, tell me what you think in the comments. Um, I don't know how to wrap this up, but um, other than knowing that whatever you're going through today, uh, God prayed, Jesus prayed for you. Let me wrap that up. <laughs> I don't really even know how to wrap this up other than to say Jesus prayed for you. 2,000 years ago and these are the things he prayed for you so you can make it through your day you can make it through uh, these hurdles and these um, barricades <laughs> and uh, get through it because Jesus prayed for you to have unity love um, heaven glory prayed for you to be protected from the evil one that's my favorite part <laughs> And uh, also that he prayed that you will have the full measure of joy, um, the Holy Spirit. And uh, so I'm going to leave you with that <laughs> until tomorrow. I um, uh, hope you have a wonderful day today. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for uh, day number 18. Love you all. <laughs> Shalom, dear friends.